Hello everyone, Adam here. Today we're gonna construct mouse jiggler or mouse mover. The cheapest you can make is from the DigiSpark and uh, some word about the DigiSpark. You may ca come across uh, three different versions of it. So this is the default one actually, this is the Chinese clone. It is containing 80 tiny 85 and or it is having ordinary USB connector. The second version that you may come across is uh, is the one with the USB micro USB actually. It also has a chip, 80 tiny 85. And the last version is actually a developer's bot, and it has a USB micro USB connector, and it doesn't contain any chip. You have to buy it on your own, and you have to program it with the Arduino DigiSpark bootloader called Micronucleos. I will show you how to do it at the end of the video. And you have also soldered the pins. And uh, when you buy it, it is it looks like this. It's an ordinary board uh, with some naming and pins included. But the problem is it doesn't have uh, the 80 tiny 85. Okay, now let's go to the first stage of this video, which will be how to make the mouse jiggler or the mouse mover on your own. Okay, now we are on the Windows PC. And if you do teleworking or you remotely work uh, on, the, on your company PC, it is mo most likely configured to have a kind of screen saver, saver or uh, screen locking uh, after you leave PC for a couple of minutes and this is really annoying so even you may want to cheat your own boss that you work uh, when you're not so uh, to do that you need this kind of device the easy USB mouse jiggler or mouse mover something that will move your mouse in uh, some time intervals just not to uh, have your PC locked uh, or just not to appear the screen saver, saver. So here comes the Eric Draken on this page with the help and I must admit that uh, this, uh, this idea is brilliant so I have done it uh, the way he describes it. So let's go through this tutorial. So first of all, you have to acquire a DigiSpark. So maybe you want to buy a um, original one if it's available, but more likely it will be hard to do. So you may also buy this development bot as I showed and at the end of the video, I will show how to configure this bot. So if you have this 80 tiny 85 uh, DigiSpark bot, then you have to install the Arduino. So, Arduino properly installed and configured looks like this. In the preferences, you have to put here the spe special um, link to the JSON file, the configuration file for the Digi Spark board. And that's not all. You have also to select in the tools a proper bot so there will be digi stamp avr bots and we are choosing a digi spark default one and what next looking at the code of eric yeah you have you have to go um, carefully to this tutorial it will show you step by step what to do so what actually the code from eric does so if you look into the code, it is very simple. What it does, it sets the pin for LED, for the LED indicator on the board to output. So we will be dri driving the LED. It starts the Digi mouse, the USB mouse driver inside the Digi Spark. And then in 30 seconds or 10 seconds, in my case it is 10 seconds, it moves the mouse 
two pixels right and two pixels left. And while doing that, it also blinks the LED, just to show you that it is still working and uh, it is doing its job. So what you want to, what you may modify is actually the move parameters here, but I left it uh, as it is and it works brilliant. Also, what Eric says uh, may be needed to do is to modify the USB identifiers that are presented to the Windows or to the other operating systems. So your DigiSpark would appear as an ordinary mouse. So in my case, I have modified this. It is placed in this directory. So if you want to find one, you do it like this. App data, then enter. Then you have to go to app data local, then Arduino, then packages, then the Tiki stamp, then the hardware, then AVR here, and in the libraries you will find a Tiki Spark mouse and inside this file usbconfig.h you can modify the identifiers that are used on the DigiSpark when the USB mouse driver is running. So what I did here, I have put a Dell USB, USB IDs, so you'll see that in a second. Okay, let's now see how it works. I will now try to attach my mouse, my USB mouse, DigiSpark mouse. But before I do that, I will launch a control panel just to show you how it appears under the device manager. Okay. I have a device manager here, so so far there's only my touchpad visible here, the mouse. Now I'm attaching the Dicky Spark over USB. It's now plugged in. And after a second you can see that the mouse appears here. Okay, mouse is visible. And now you can see that the mouse is new mouse up just appeared in the system and in every 10 seconds the LED indicator will blink and the mouse will move. Okay, actually you, you've seen that it was shaking for a second, so let's give him another few seconds. It's moving, as you can see. So every 10 seconds in my um, program, there's 10 seconds of interval it will move to pixels left and right. So it works this way and it will prevent you, your PC from running the screen saver and locking the, the keyboard. So it is very useful, especially if you are using uh, your company PC. So thanks, Eric. Uh, that was very nice solution. Thank you very much. So just once again the link. And now I will move uh, to Linux to show you how to uh, create your own DigiSpark from this universal board uh, that I showed at the beginning. I promise that I will show you how to burn the Micronucleus uh, Arduino DigiSpark bootloader. So here's the information. First of all, you need to acquire the recent uh, image that you will push to the chip. So in this case, there will be T85 default hex and is available on a GitHub on a Micronucleus project. And uh, what else you need? Uh, you, of course, need the USB ASP programmer with the Kanda connector. You need uh, six color cables and you, of course, need this developer board uh, for 80Tiny85 with a uh, chip 80Tiny85. And if you have these three components, uh, then this one will become the Digispark unit quite soon.
So how to connect? Uh, first of all, you need to see what is the uh, pinout of the Kanda connector from the USB ASP. These are names MOSC, MISO, SCK, VCC, Ground and Reset. And these pins have to be connected with these color cables to the Dickey Spark or the or the development board. Uh, you can see that uh, here are the names P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, as well as 5 volts GND. And these pins are actually right here. So you have a naming here. You need to find a correct pin on the pins that you already soldered to this board. And then if you have it, and if you have it connected, you simply attached, attach this board uh, to the USB ASP programmer and you attach the USB ASP to the PC. And the hardest thing I've actually found to be is the correct uh, fuse settings. So in this case, I have prepared uh, some batch script that will configure the fuses of ATtiny85 in correct manner. So in this case, there will be eFuse uh, 0 FE, LFuse 0 E1, and HFuse 0 DD. That will make uh, the ATtiny85 capable to flush itself. So this is basically what you need to do. And then I will launch the script. Oh yeah, one, one, more, one more thing. Uh, if you can see, I'm flashing with the image micronucleus 1.06.hex. So that's the one that I found to be the most stable. So you may want to look for it on the internet. Uh, as you can see in this directory, I have some hex files. So this is the one that I'll be doing. And now let's flash it with the tool named AVR Dude. So the one that is working with the USB ASP programmer. And now flashing. Okay, as you can see, it was flashed maybe once again just to be sure. And then we can detach all this stuff. And we can connect ordinary USB, micro USB actually, cable here to see if this one works under the Arduino environment. So. Let me run the Arduino environment and we will see if that worked. Let's close this. I have the Arduino ID. It should be launching in a second. This is under Linux, so don't worry. It works exactly the same way under Windows. As you can see, I have uh, this uh, development bot with 80 tiny 85 flashed with the micro nucleus uh, bootloader and I will attach it over USB to entity to Arduino just to see if it can flash on the mouse jiggler okay I as you can see I have uh, very same piece of software here. So this is the one from Eric Traken, and now I will flash it under Linux and flash. And I will have to connect this one when it when the Arduino says so. So let me let's wait a couple of seconds. So now it's running a DigiSpark uploader and I will have to connect. Probably now. Okay, so it's flashed. 
as you can see oh yeah accidentally i pressed it once again plugin device now here you go here you go and it's flashed okay so as you can see it worked and maybe one more thing you want to see is uh, how this, dev this device really presents to the operating system. Mm, so if I disconnect this one from Linux and if I connect it again, in a second we can see that it was exposing itself as a Dell mouse to the operating system, as you can see. So it is it is not detectable by any kind of uh, security department in your company or even the IT guy, whatever. So it is really a good solution for, for faking uh, mouse. Okay, hope hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video and hope you liked it. Uh, so if you did, please leave me a like and press subscribe button to see.